Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So with the international break upcoming, guys, I figure now is a good time to do a recap of the month of August. Um, and just give you guys my quick thoughts on each of the top five leagues. So I know the streams can be quite long at times, you know, around an hour to two hours. And I know it's really hard to, like, watch the entire thing because some of you guys don't, just don't have the time. So for that reason, every month I'm going to be doing a small little recap video for you guys. Like around, like, and you know, 10 to 20 minutes-ish, giving my thoughts on top five leagues. So I hope you guys do enjoy. I remember guys like and subscribe if you guys want to see this, of course. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's start with the Premier League first, guys. So the Premier League for me, as far as the tie race is concerned, it is Man City's title to lose. Man City, have, Man City are the favorites to win this title. And we're going to have to have a very uncomfortable conversation if they do five in a row. Because five in a row is crazy. Five in a row is really crazy. For what is considered to be the, one of the best leagues in the world, it will look really bad. So Arsenal... You guys have to save the Premier League. You guys have to basically do. You guys have to basically win the league for that conversation not to happen. Because Arsenal for me is the best hope, and the reason why I don't have much faith in Arsenal is because I just don't trust the strikers. I just don't trust uh, Gabriel Jesus. I just don't try, trust Kai Havertz to be consistent goal scores. And another issue I feel like Arsenal is that they're relying too much on Saka. Where is the backup for Saka? Why does Saka play every single game? You see. These kind of issues with Arsenal because they have improved their team, you know, in the midfield, Michael Moreno bringing the defense, Calafori. But I feel like they haven't addressed the uh, attacking positions. And I know they brought Sterling on loan, but I don't know if Sterling's going to be that amazing of a player for them. I just don't really believe so. Liverpool should be a strong third place. They've had a good start to the season. Arnest Law has done a great job. Liverpool been fantastic. And that fourth place is really difficult because that fourth place for me, it's almost like five teams are competing. You've got Chelsea, you've got Aston Villa, Newcastle, and Tottenham. And what makes that fourth place so tricky is that whichever team gets fourth place will just have a scrape for it. I think they're going to have a great, they're going to probably have a strong first half of the season, and the second half just about scrape through. Kind of like what Aston Villa did last season. And, you know, those other teams are competing for fifth to seventh. So it should be interesting. Because remember, guys, at the beginning of the season, I predicted Manchester United to finish fourth. And, guys, that prediction may already look like a bad start because Man United not had a good win, uh, start in August. You know, one win and two losses. And I'm looking at the fixtures on September. I mean, besides the Southampton game, it's really tough because they have to play Crystal Palace away, taught them at home. I'm not really sure how I feel about United. So United's going to have a tough uh, September, in my opinion. So it's going to be interesting who gets that fourth to seventh. Um, we'll definitely see. We'll definitely have a closer idea once we, you know, September ends. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel. And then as far as the relegation is concerned, relegation, I think Everton's in a really bad position. Everton's a really bad start so far this season. Three losses. 10 goals conceded is crazy, and two losses at Goodison Park is really bad. I still think Everton will find a way to survive. I believe they're going to find a way to survive. They're going to just do the bare minimum. They're going to probably win on the final two, a few match days in secure position. I think Southampton is pretty much screwed. I think it's hopeless for them. They don't have enough goals in them. And even though Wolves are in the relegation, uh, scrap, relegation zone right now, I think Wolves will be fine. So... I think Ipswich will go down, and I actually have um, so Southampton, Ipswich, and I actually have Nottingham Forest, even though Nottingham Forest have had a good start to the season. So uh, this is going to be interesting to see how the uh, table turns there. But, yeah, this is how I feel so far. The Premier League. And obviously, Erling Holland's already the top score with seven goals. It's insane, guys. Erling Holland's in seven goals. He's gonna Is he going to break his goal-scoring record his first season he came in the Premier League? Because he probably will. And the better, bigger question is, will he break Alan Shearer's record? Because that's going to be a big statement. Let's move on over to La Liga. For me, guys, this might come as a hot take here. I actually believe La Liga has the best title race in the top five leagues. And the reason why I say the best title race is because you can make a genuine argument for both Barca and Real Madrid. See, the thing with the other leagues is that there's a clear favorite. Like, you know, EPL, Manchester City is the favorites. Serie A, it's really interesting to lose, even though Juventus have a strong team. Um, and then obviously in Liga, we already know who's going to win it. And in the Bundesliga, Bar Leverkusen are the favorites. They haven't lost anyone significant. So I just think that La Liga's high race is so fascinating, and I'm very much interested to see how this happens because there's a lot of narratives in La Liga. Like, if Hansi Flick wins La Liga with Barca in his first season, that would be an incredible achievement. And dare I would say, it might even be more impressive than what Xavi did a few years ago because, remember, look at all the injured players we have right now at the moment. you got Arau injured. we got Christensen injured. we got Gavi injured. we got Pedro. we got Frankie de Jong injured. You know, yeah, you know. They got Bernal injured. So, Barca have a good start, man. Rafinha has been amazing. Uh, Lewandowski has been great as well. And this will be a huge redemption for Barca. And for Real Madrid, it will look embarrassing. I'm sorry. Real Madrid have to win this league. If Real Madrid do not win this league, it will be a disgrace. 
with considering the squad they and built, considering the players they brought in, because the squad is pretty much the same as last season. All you're just doing is adding Mbappe and Hendrick, and obviously they did lose Tony Cruz and Nacho, but it's mostly the same. So Don Carlo, man. Can he defend his league title, which he hasn't? Def- he has never defended his league title in his history. And Real Madrid haven't defended the league title since I believe 2007, which is absolutely insane. So it's going to be interesting in title race. It's going to see what they're and then Atletico Madrid. Can Atletico Madrid be that te- that pre- that team that makes it difficult? I still feel like Atletico Madrid have had not a great start. You know, two wins, two draws. That draw at home against Espanyol is really bad. You can't be drawing Espanyol at home. I'm just, I'm just sorry, you can't be doing that. So I like a Madrid in a really tricky position, and then obviously that two-two draw against Villarreal away. To be fair, I don't think that's a bad result for them. Um, but it's that a draw against Espanyol though. They shouldn't be drawing a dropping of points at home. But at least they got a win against Bilbao, which was cr- critical. So I'm just looking at the top three here. The top three will probably stay as it is, and then the fourth place guys can Villarreal get fourth place. I think it's going to be Villarreal and potentially Girona. And yeah, I think it's going to be Villarreal, Girona, maybe Sociedad. Although Sociedad have not a good start to the season so far, and Bilbao they've they've been kind of struggling so far. Not a good start for them. So, guys, could Villarreal be a surprise team? Because remember, they have no European football, which I think is massive for Villarreal. So they might be the favorites to do so. And then Girona, Sociedad, Bilbao will probably round off the European spots. And then I think Betis might miss out on European football. Although Betis or the relegation, they're close to relegation zone as we speak. Although, to be fair, they do have a game at hand against Getafe, so we have to keep that in mind. That game will, of course, take place. So, I'm looking at the relegation battle here, guys. It's obviously very early to see, uh, but I think Valencia will be fine. Even though they've had a bad start to the season, I think they'll be fine. Las Palmas is maybe one that could maybe go down, although they do have a good defense, to be fair, and Sevilla, I don't think they'll go down. So, I have Valladolid, I have Espanol, and I have... Um, like on as the three newly promoted teams go down. But honestly, La Liga, man, relegation is always tight. Relegation is always tight. I remember the last few seasons, the relegation gets decided in the final match day. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one pans out because relegation is very difficult to call. But those are my thoughts on La Liga, man. And we'll see if Mbappe can get his team firing because he finally scored a goal brace yesterday, last night, against uh, Real Batiste. Moving on to Serie A here, guys. Serie A. Inter, man. Inter has been amazing. And Juventus, man. Juventus has been great this so far this season. I think Mazza has done a great job with Juve so far. Two wins, a draw. So it's been a good start for Juve. And what I'm thinking to here is that in terms of the title race here, it's Inter to lose. Because Inter, um, you know, they have the squad. They haven't lost anyone notable. They, in fact, they strengthened the squad. Whereas Juve, they're still kind of rebuilding under Mazza. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting. But let me just say this right now, though. It's going to be inter Juve. I don't think Milan's going to compete. I'm sorry. I don't think Milan's going to compete. Um, and, yeah, for me, it's inter Juve. And speaking of Milan, guys, Milan are a really bad position, guys. No wins so far. Two draws, one loss. Really, really tough start for Milan. And then, obviously, uh, Napoli. Very weird. So, looking at the top four, guys, it's very, very weird so far. I know it's only been three games in. But still, like, it's crazy. Torino, Udinese are actually in the top four as you speak. Imagine this is how it ends. Obviously, I don't think it will end like that, but Milan probably should get third. And then Napoli might be able to get fourth. And then Atalanta, man. Atalanta, not looking the best. You know, kind of mid-table right there. And then obviously, uh, you got Roma that's been struggling. Roma has really been bad so far. So, I think that fourth place spot is going to be very interesting because we have Napoli, then you have Roma, uh, then Atalanta. I feel like these three teams will compete for that fourth place spot, and it's going to be interesting. And then obviously, lots you have to consider in as well. So for me, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's interest titles to lose. And then look at the relegation zone. I think Como, Venezia are pretty much uh, screwed up. Um, I think they're going to be in the relegation battle. And the Bologna should survive, even though Bologna have not had a good start to the season. And I think Cagliari is a good pick that maybe could go down. Uh, so they might be able to go down. So looking at that. So. It's going to be interesting to see how Serie A wraps up. I'm, I'm very interested to see how this league goes. But, yeah, in terms of the – because what I'm really excited for this is that fourth-place battle. That fourth-place battle is going to be interesting. I think the fourth-place battle in this league might be the best of all the top five leagues. Uh, then moving over to Bundesliga, man. Bundesliga, man. Um, Leverkusen, man. They finally lost. They finally lost to Leipzig at home. And we'll see if that how big that loss – that Leipzig, uh, how, big of a, how big of a mental toll that is on the players. Will that loss just be a start of their downfall, or it's just a blip? You know, we'll see how that goes. I personally, for me, I think it's going to be just a blip. I think it's just going to be a one-off. I think they'll be fine. Um, but now, it's going to be interesting to see how Leverkusen do, and then for Bayern Munich. So let's be real, guys. The tie race is basically between Bayern and Leipzig. 
uh, sorry, Byron and Leverkusen. I don't think Leipzig and Dortmund will compete, even though they've been unbeaten so far. I think they'll naturally fall off. And let's be real, Leverkusen should win this league. They haven't lost any one notable players. They've only strengthened. And for Bayern Munich, there's still a lot of question marks, especially how they are defensively, which is a bit of a concern. So I think it's going to be interesting. Although Bayern could win this league this season, it, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. But I think Leverkusen, I think most people will agree with me that Leverkusen are slight favorites. Although Bayern have what it takes. And then for that third and fourth place battle, it should be Leipzig and Dortmund. They should be finishing in that third and fourth. And then fifth and sixth and seventh is where it gets interesting. Because I think Hoffenheim, even though they have not had a good start of the season, I think Hoffenheim has been a team that I could definitely get the spot. Maybe Frankfurt as well. Uh, potentially Gladbach, Wolfsburg. I think that fourth place battle is going to be very tough to call in this league. And yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, sorry, not fourth place battle, but fifth place battle. Sorry, what I'm saying is that fifth place, fifth to seventh best is going to be interesting. And then the relegation playoffs, man. I think St. Pauli are really, really in a bad, bad position. I think Olsen and Kiel. And I think Volkin will probably go to the relegation playoffs like they usually do. So it's going to be interesting to see how the relegation battle goes out. And Stuttgart, man, they're struggling so far, man. It's not been a good start for Stuttgart. Now we move on to League On, man. The final league we got here, the top five leagues. Guys, there's a certain narrative that's going around the campfire. If if Marseille win the league title, and MG, by the way, I'm going to refer to him as MG. I'm not going to refer to him as full name, just for obvious reasons. If MG becomes a top scorer in Ligue 1 and helps Marseille win the league on title, we're going to have to have a very uncomfortable conversation about Ligue 1. And we're going to have to have a scary conversation because that's going to be insane. And his first season here, that's going to be crazy. Especially considering the Marseille mayor I heard was against the transfer. It would be insane. It would also be crazy for De Zerbe. So for PSG, man, normally I wouldn't be saying this, but I kind of have to say this. I kind of hope PSG win the league, the league 1 title because I don't want Marseille to win the league mainly because of that guy. But let's be real, guys. Mars, uh, PSG should win the league on title. PSG have actually been go so far good this season. They've been looking very dominant. They haven't seemed like they missed Mbappe. But let's be real, guys. PSG were able... Uh, PSG is not... The PSG is not testing league on. League is not a good barometer to test for PSG because they, they stole to that league. We're going to see the true PSG and the Champions League. So let's not make... Let's not think that, oh, PSG is back all of a sudden. Look how they've done so far. Season 13 goals scored, two goals conceded. We're going to have to see what they do in the Champions League because that's where they're going to be truly tested and we're going to see how good this PSG team is. So I think PSG, Marseille, Monaco is probably your three teams to compete for the Ligue 1 title. I will say those three will probably finish in the Champions League positions. And then four to six, I mean, Mon uh, I mean, Lons has been good so far. Lille has been good so far. Uh, you know, it's, been a, it's going to be interesting. And then obviously you could also see Nice. I think that's going to round off. And then relegation about my set at TM, man. I really hope they don't go down. As a newly promoted team, you know they're a, they're a league on winner in the past, in the last couple. Of, they're a league on they're an old league on winner. It would be sad. Angers, I think, is pretty much screwed, and I think Montpellier. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think Auxerre uh, will go down, and potentially uh, Le Havre. Although Le Havre has been a good start, so we'll be see how that goes. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy this little recap, guys. We got around like a ten to fifteen minute video for you guys. Got this under thirteen minutes. 13 minutes, which I think is a good recap size. So if you guys did enjoy, please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.